Well, greetings, saints. Welcome to Chaplain Peter 1 on YouTube. And today, uh, the Lord has put it on my heart to pray for a young lady. I wrote down here, the prisoner of the Lord Jesus Christ, Miriam Ibrahim. If you've been watching the news, I'm sure it's pretty much around the world, how this 27-year-old Sudanese doctor is in prison because she's a Christian. Um, in prison with her is her 20-month-old uh, son, 20 months old, and also she just gave birth to uh, a baby girl. And she is uh, weaning the baby now, feeding the baby. And when the baby is weaned, she shall be given 100 lashes and then hung by the neck until dead. This is um, by the courts of the uh, Sudan government, uh, Khartoum, notorious uh, government, Muslim government. And um, what I want to do today is I want to pray for her because it's been uh, troubling my heart, my spirit, that this young woman may actually be put to death. But we got to remember something, saints, that um, if she should be martyred, because that's what she would be, she would be martyred, because they've already asked her several times if she would deny the Lord Jesus Christ. See, this is what it's all about. This is what our life is all about. This is what all the wars are all about. Right? This is about the Lord and the ones that hate the Lord. Like Jesus said, they hated me without a cause. If they hated me, they're going to hate you. And then he says there's going to be earthquakes, there's going to be tsunamis, there's going to be famines, wars, rumors of wars, but the end is not yet. And then he says, then they will deliver you up. They'll deliver you up. They'll hate your guts. They'll hate you. They'll hate all nations. Will will hate you for my name's sake. And they will uh, afflict you and kill you. So that's that's uh, Matthew 24. And we're getting close to this now. And for you saints here in America, if you think this cannot come here, you are living in a fantasy world. Because this is not our world. This is not our world, saints. This is not our, our place. This is not our home. We have a home with the Lord Jesus Christ. He says he's got a mansion for us. Abraham, who looked for a city that had 12 foundations, whose builder and maker was God. That's our city. We are citizens of heaven. While we're here, we're to obey whatever government we're under, up to a point, until they tell us to blaspheme to go against our Lord, then we must um, we must disagree. We must not comply. And if they put us in prison, like they put this woman in prison, then we have to go to prison. If they want to execute us, then they have to. Then we have to be executed. You know, the Lord has a martyr's crown. This young woman will get a martyr's crown, and all those who have died for the Lord who've been put to death for the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave their life for the Lord, will have a martyr's crown. Not, not a Muslim crown for killing people, blowing up people, but a, a crown from the Lord Jesus Christ for loving Him, loving Him even more than her children. Isn't that something, saints? Because we know that if, if she recants, if she denies the Lord, I, I, don't, I don't know if she can repent of it or not. I really don't know. I, I would hope so. But if she hangs in there and she actually goes all the way to be beaten a hundred lashes and to die for the Lord Jesus Christ, 
then you and me need to start uh, waking up. Because I'll tell you something, this, this woman puts me to shame. This woman puts you to shame. I've been uh, fasting on and off for the last few days. Uh, fasting can be food, it can be things you like to do and you don't do them, whatever it is. But you do it because you want to suffer along with them that are suffering for the Lord Jesus Christ. And there's a scripture here in uh, Hebrews chapter 13 and in verse... Uh, 3, 13-3, remember them that are in bonds, in other words, in prison, as bound with them, and them which suffer adversity, as being yourselves also in the body. So the Lord is telling us that, remember them, and it's not only this young woman, with her children in prison. There's another, uh, Pastor Saeed, who went to Iran, American citizen. And uh, the, the children inside the prison with, uh, with this lady, um, Miriam Ibrahim, are American citizens because the father is an American citizen. And Pastor Saeed, who's, who's beaten, internal bleeding, suffering for the Lord, and for what? He went back to Iran from the United States, got all the paperwork, probably they got all the money from him for the documents he had to, he had to get from the government to, uh, for orphanages, orphanages, to help, to help the children that have no father, the fatherless. And they throw him in prison, he's an apostate, worthy of death, you know, they, uh, they've given him an eight month sentence, but uh, not eight months, eight years I believe, yes. And um, notorious prison in Iran, and he might not make it out of there either. You know, my suggestion to you, my brothers and sisters, um, forget the government. What I mean is, you know, we rely on the government for a lot of stuff. It's time to go to the Lord. It says here in uh, Hebrews chapter 4, at the end of the chapter, chapter 4, verse 16. Now let's start in verse 14. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that ye may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. So I think this is the time of need for many people, Pastor Saeed, Miriam Abraham and her children, people in, uh, in these labor camps in North Korea, in China and other places of the world, uh, people in danger all the time because they made a profession of the Lord Jesus Christ. I was just reading uh, how in, uh, in India, when they go to baptize you in the river after you trusted Jesus, a lot of times they'll tell you, now you understand, you trusted Jesus, and now we're going to baptize you. And this means you might have to die for the Lord. Did they tell you that when you got baptized here in the States? Did, you, did they tell you that, Saints? That you might have to die for the Lord? Because that, that's it, that's the bottom line. We don't belong to ourselves, we belong to God. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to pray right now. And then I would like to put this prayer on my YouTube channel. And then I would like you to put a prayer on YouTube also. And then another person put a prayer on there also. And continue and continue and continue to pray and let it go around the world, saints. Let's rise up and intercede for our suffering, 
brothers and sisters in Christ. We've got it good here, man. It won't be long, though. The same persecution is going to come here. We need now to stand up and to pray for our brothers and sisters. So I'm going to pray, saints, and then I'm asking you, you do the same thing. Don't be, be ashamed. Get out, get, put it on. All you need is a simple video camera, and you load it down, and I load it down, that's it. It's simple. And pray. Many of you are out there have YouTube channels also, and you preach the gospel. Get on here, and let us start interceding. Let us start praying. Let's pray, saints. Heavenly Father, we just come to your throne of grace, and we just thank you, Lord Jesus. Holy and righteous are you, a great God, an everlasting God. You have always existed. There never was a time that you did not exist. You know all things. You do all things. Holy, holy, holy. Hallelujah, Lord. Lord, we lift up these saints to, to you today, these suffering saints. This Miriam Abraham. Because she professes Christ, she refuses to deny you. Lord, you promised to give her a martyr's crown, the highest calling of heaven. You yourself received the martyr's crown, Lord, and then that will follow you. So we pray for her right now. We pray for her children. We pray for her husband, Lord. Lord, have mercy. Comfort her as only you can comfort her. Pour out your Holy Ghost on her upon the prison. And Lord, and the Lord shows me right now as I pray, saints, that this is no accident. This is what is to come. And that this is to prepare us to start to cry out to God. What will it take, saints, for us to start crying out to God? What will it take, saints, for us to start fasting and seeking the Lord with all our heart? and putting away sin, and being holy, sanctified people. Pastors, call on your congregation. Call a solemn assembly, like Joel said, grab hold of the altar, and start to weep between the porch and the altar, saints, and to cry and to sigh for the abominations done on the face of the earth. Father, have mercy upon this woman, upon her husband, upon the children, Lord. And let her blood speak. If they kill her, Lord, if they martyr her, let her blood speak around the world. Let it be the seed to raise up many martyrs to come, Lord. <coughs> Encourage us, Lord. Great encouragement. Great encouragement for us, Lord, to be men of God. Men and women of God to raise our voice to cry out. Lord, we pray for Pastor Saeed right now in the Iranian prison, Lord. We pray for his release. We pray for his family, his children. But if not, your will be done. Let him be martyred and receive a martyr's crown. And let his blood be the seed that raises up many more martyrs. Many more saints to preach the gospel. May the saints wake up, Lord. Wake us up. Give them no peace, Lord, until we have given our lives totally and completely out to you, just like these people that are suffering right now. We pray for them in the North Korea camps. They experiment on them. We know this. We know from newspaper reports they cut out their organs and sell them to the highest bidder. We know they get caught with a Bible. The whole family goes to the camp. Oh, Lord, 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 the blood of the prophets, Lord. The blood of the prophets has been shed, Lord, for centuries and centuries, Lord. And now it just may be our turn. Help us, Lord, to be faithful, Lord. Help us, Lord, to be faithful unto death, Lord. Help us to wake up and know what we're here for, Lord, what you called us to, Lord. Because if the head suffered, the body must suffer also. We've been called to suffer for your namesake, Lord. We've been called to lay down our life for you and for the brothers and sisters, Lord. Father, have mercy on, a on Miriam Abraham. Have mercy on her children, her family, Lord. Father, we pray for the Muslims. 
We pray for them, Lord, that many will be saved, that her death would be the seed that saves many, many Muslims, because they know not what they do. You know, the Lord shows me just like he stood up in Acts chapter 7 when Stephen was murdered, when he was stoned to death by the Jewish Sanhedrin, by the Pharisees. He cried out to God as he was dying, and he says, Father, lay not this to their charge. Forgive them, Lord. And he saw the Lord standing at the right hand, receiving him. So it shall be for Abraham, for Miriam Abraham. So it shall be for the martyrs. The Lord Jesus stands up and receives them into heaven. Praise your holy name, Lord. So, Lord, wake up your saints around the world. In Russia, Slishitsha, Vamnada Malitsa, Vamnada Stayat Pinet Boga, Is Prasit the Milos, Be Boch Pamagala to Sheshtino, Be on a Mila Seal, Daja, Daja Umirit Nagasport. Oh, Hospital Pomilois. Господи, помилуйся. Have mercy, Lord Jesus. Have mercy, Lord Jesus. Царство небесное ожидают на нас. Скоро придет время, что мы тоже будем стоять перед Богом. А, а что мы не будем сказать, и мы даже не можем молиться. Надо молиться, братья и сестры. Надо. Надо перед Богом. Молиться и спросить Богу на милость, и Он, и он помогал ей в это время. We gotta stand up, saints. We gotta pray. We gotta seek the Lord at this time for your children, because your children for sure are going to see this persecution. We're at the end of it. I said, are older, older now. We're we're at the end of our lives. We're getting closer. But these these children are going to see this. You need now to teach them to pray. Now's the time. Lord, wake up your church. We cry out to you, Lord Jesus. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy, Lord. Receive this woman into your arms, Lord. Receive Pastor Saeed. Receive the martyrs, the blood of the martyrs. Receive them that are suffering for you, Lord. For this is a great honor. And Lord, help us, dear God, that we might be faithful if it should come to us, Lord. Help us, Lord, to trust you, to believe on you, to give everything we got, Lord. Father, have mercy. Have mercy. You know, I want to read Hebrews chapter 11. And here's what it says, saints. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. I'm going to skip around here a little bit. By faith Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. But by faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should have to receive his inheritance, obeyed and he went, not knowing where he went. By faith Joseph, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel and gave commandment concerning his bones. By faith Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. By faith Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him that is invisible. Through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith he passed through the Red Sea as on dry land, which the Egyptians are saying to do were drowned. The Lord puts on my mind Galatians chapter 4. Now listen to this. Tell me the Bible is not up to date. 
Galatians chapter 4, verse 22. For it is written, Abraham had two sons, the one of a bondmaid, the other of a free woman. But he who was the bondwoman was born after the flesh, Ishmael. But he of the free woman by promise, Isaac. Which things are an allegory. It's like a picture story. For these are the two covenants, the one from Mount Sinai, which gendered the bondage, which is Hagar. For this Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia, an answer to Jerusalem, which now is, and is in bondage with her children. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. For it is written, Rejoice thou that barren, that bearest not. Break forth and cry, thou that travailest not. For the desolate hath many more children than she which had a husband. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. But as then, he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit. Even so, it is now. Isn't it so? Ishmael is still persecuting Isaac. And now you and me are with Isaac. Because we are under the new covenant. Father, again, we just thank you, Lord. And we ask you again, Lord, for mercy. For mercy, Lord, for, for Miriam Abraham, for Pastor Saeed, for the other saints around the world. 300 teenagers, young girls, kidnapped by this uh, Buku Haram, whatever, whatever it is, another Muslim terrorist group, Lord, going to be sold into slavery and everything. Lord, have mercy on them. Return them to their parents, Lord. Let them stand firm on you, Lord Jesus. Help them right now, Father. Help them. And Father, I just ask you that you loose confusion upon his Boku Haram. Loose destruction upon them, Lord. Confuse them. That they kill off each other. They fight against each other. That they don't know what they're doing, Lord. And have those girls rescued. Have them escape, Lord. Have them get out of there in the name of Jesus, Lord. Have mercy, dear Lord. You know, the Lord is going to he's gonna rain confusion as he did in the battle of Gideon. As he killed off the Assyrians out there waiting to attack Israel. He lose confusion on them. Absolute confusion. That's how it is with all who rebel against Christ. Father, we just thank you, Lord. We just thank you, Lord. And even though... We, we might be put to death, Lord. We're going to be raised from the dead. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your promise. We thank you, Lord, that you are a personal God. We thank you that you have forgiven our sins, that you have given us hope, that you are a sure anchor to our soul. Be it right now, comfort them by the comforter of your Holy Spirit to all of those that are in trouble, in great trouble. Some are being tortured right now, Lord. Some are being put to death because they're trusting you. Some are working jobs, long hours, terrible jobs. They're in prison and, and they're working hard, Lord, because they're Christians. That's their only crime, Lord. Hallelujah. But their name is in the hall of faith with the other ones. Their name is in the hall of faith. So again, we just thank you, Lord. Wake up your church. Let them put videos on and pray and let these videos go around the world. Let the unbelievers see that the believers are victorious even unto death. For they loved, they did not love their life <coughs> unto the death. They overcame them by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Praise His holy name. Wake up, saints. It's time. Time to cry out. Time to pray. May God have mercy upon you. Seek the Lord now. Now's the time, saints. I'm going to look forward to seeing you praying on YouTube. God bless you all. Amen.